Got something to say. I know, two times this week. Two fabulous women. Right now, I'm waiting for Dr. Candice, make sure I get it right, Rasidi, to join us. Don't you love when a friend of a friend connects you? And you're like, man, oh man. Coffee, having tea with them. That's Candace. I just knew it. And I love what she's doing in higher education. There she is. Woohoo! Hi, Candace. How are I'm you? Doing great, thank you. How are you? Good. I just told them that if you we live near, I'd be wanting to have coffee, tea, and wine with you a yes. lot. <laughs> that would be lovely. <laughs> All right. So before we get into it, I want to tell you a little bit about Candace. Candace is an educational entrepreneur. I love that. An educational entrepreneur. I love that title. Her career in higher education combined with an executive coaching certification allows her to work with students to create career pathways to high level corporate executive. Candace is passionate about helping people transition into every next phase of their career. Yeah. Candace. <laughs> That sounds like a lot of fun yet challenging job. Yeah, that's why I do it because it, it <laughs> checks off both boxes, right? It's really fun, but it's also really challenging. <laughs> yeah. So I want to get right into the statement I said. If you want to tell women around the world or men watching, because we do have them, what would it be? And it's a big one. If you think it, okay, I got that. If you think it, you can do it. But the next line, what if you could have it all? <laughs> yeah. Tell us really, more. That's a really stacked set of questions. Um, but I really believe that if you can think something, then you can do it, right? Because it's, it's not like you have to go invent something um, and create a patent and make something out of thin air. But if you can think it, if you can feel it, if you can dream about it, you can absolutely do it because it's it's your mind, it's your thoughts, it's your heart speaking to you and telling you what you want. So the next line then is, if you can think it, you can do it. And it takes a lot to do it, sure, mm -hmm. but you can. And I think that people get stuck in that first half. Well, I'm thinking about this thing and they don't stop and say, well, what does it really take to actually do it? But a lot of people do. A lot of people do all the things that they want to do and many of us sit back and say man I wish I could have done x y and z and what I'm saying is that you absolutely can you absolutely can do all the things that you want to do you know yesterday I was fortunate to teach entrepreneurship to seniors high school seniors from the Philadelphia area and I played a little game with them, and I said, they said, well, make sure you ask Dr. Candace what she thinks of this. I had them close their eyes and say, I hope this will happen, and then write down what they were feeling through their body. And it was specifically about what they wanted to do after school. And then I had them do, well, what if you expected it to happen? What would be the difference? So... Is that along the lines, like, if you think it, you can do it, and the, the mindset? Because for me, when I hope it, it might happen, and then my actions are different. But if I expect it to happen, then I take totally different actions. It's like I'm confident this is going to work. Exactly. And um, part of it is, you know, the word mindset is everywhere now. Everybody's coining that phrase. But if you break that down, you're setting up your mind. And that's what expectations are, right? We can hope for things. And hope is a very loose term that everybody uses to mean any number of things. But you're hoping in a substance. And it's actually, um, it's actually very biblical, right? That, you know, there is hope in a substance that it exists. And when you believe that, then you expectantly behave in a certain way. And so I expect that if I'm thinking about it and I want it, that I'm going to do it. And then it's part of a planning phase of laying out the groundwork. But I love what you said about how do they feel, right? Because feelings too are mm -hmm. also very fluid. 
but there's a consistency to how you feel, right? If it keeps coming up in your mind, if you keep thinking about it, if other things that happen around you and the people you're involved with keep kind of knocking on that door of your mind and you keep having these same thoughts and feelings about what you want, that's starting to create a different kind of hope. That's starting to build the expectation that, that it's calling you. <laughs> yeah. uh, or that, you know, you have opened yourself up to find a pathway when you keep thinking and dreaming about things. Hmm. So they had, they had a bunch of questions to you for you, but I want to make sure I get to everyone as much as possible. But this was a big one, and I, I wanted to get your opinion on it. So for a lot of these kids, they're not seeing success surrounding them. Hmm. They don't have a lot of support from mentors and what should they do when in their world what they're seeing is a lot of people not reaching their dreams it's, it's very difficult because in their world like you said many people do it that's for other people you know that's way over there and in their daily life they're not seeing it how can they get through what they said it's really what did they say? it's really noisy miss sandy it's really noisy there's so many people telling us how the world is not fair. How can they drown out all that noise and get to college? And get to college, is that yeah. what you said? Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I'm gonna come to your class. We'll start right there. <laughs> Especially yes. if they're local to Philadelphia. Um, they are. Yes, and, and um, the first thing is knowing what, what you think you wanna do and identifying that. Um, and to get to college, it can be difficult, but there is a process um, that you can follow. And once you know what you want to do, if it requires college, then right. you want to start with the with the two year school. And that's actually where I'm an instructor. That's where my um, the educational piece comes from. In my educational entrepreneur, that that title is really because I have a whole group of students that are everywhere in the region. Um, and figuring out what they all want is so different, right? So we have to kind of create different um, pathways for them to reach their career goals. And that's the creative entrepreneurial part. Um, but if you have students that are sitting in a classroom and they don't know how to get to college, mm -hmm. I, I'm going to come in with a career assessment that's not going to take very long, help identify what it really looks like to work in that field with all those job titles, the money that you make, the places that they hire. Mm -hmm. Is a degree really necessary? How many degrees are necessary? Um, and we can, if you have a computer lab, we can do the applications right there because um, Rowan College of South Jersey is open to everyone. We have oh. all classes. We have beds at Rowan University. So there's a lot of different ways that you can get there. I think that it's just being aware of what is there, right? And we know that awareness is really where it all begins. We have yeah. all kinds of thoughts, but we don't know what they really mean in the real world until we start asking questions. And so it's amazing that they asked you that or that they shared yeah. that with you, that they know how to do it. Um, you know, so myself and my team would, would absolutely come in and tell them, here's the first three things you need to do. Do it with them so that at least when I leave, they're on like step four. And, you know, we can walk them through the rest yeah. of the process um, and have them come over. You're going to love you. All right. So that leads me to the next question that I'm getting here. People are emailing me. Are there a lot of kids that you think it wouldn't be best for them to go to school? Like some of these kids, they knew mm -hmm. they wanted wanted to do something in business for themselves, but they also want to go to college. They want to do college if they can and be in business for themselves. And then there's others, they didn't think that that would be possible or they would just like to start their own business. Or do you meet kids? Wait, let me make sure I got it right and say, you know what? College really isn't right for you. So that's a tough question, but I don't think that absolutely every person needs to go to college. I don't. Okay. Um, it really depends on what your end goal is. And even if you take the career assessment and you figure out, you know, I don't need a degree for this, I'm happy for you because now at least you've identified that you're not going to spend time and money right now going into, um, going into a degree that isn't going to help you long-term. 
especially if you, you know, are thinking to yourself, I want to be hands on in my business all day, every day. And you want to start it now and you have a plan for that. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go to college. I will tell you that we do have classes and certificate programs that are very simple to get um, in entrepreneurship and in business where you only take a couple classes. You don't have to take, um, you know, an entire degree. So while you don't necessarily need college, if you want to get some just so that you're prepared and you have a little bit of a foundation in case, you know, it grows and you need to figure out, wow, how do I, how do I manage my accounting books? How do I grow and, and get a ton of marketing done? Right. Those are the classes that are in some of our smaller programs that are college, but they're not this whole degree that takes years, you know, to complete. Gotcha. Yeah. So my adults want to know, <laughs> <laughs> this person has five kids, so let's just keep that in mind. What do you think the trend is of kids attending college with the rising cost? Now, she's joking and saying she thinks they should either go into the armed services or get full-time jobs and then go to school. She got five kids. Yeah. So... I definitely hear both of those pieces, right? We definitely need a strong military um, and those numbers have dwindled over the years. So if that's a pathway and you want to serve your country, please keep us safe. I'm all for it. And they will, they'll pay for you to go to college later, right? They'll be part of that program when they come back from a certain period of time. Um, but I also think that it is extremely expensive to go to school. And I will tell you that um, if I could ask, the parents a question right and this is to all parents in general yeah. like yeah. if you're expecting that your kid's going to go to school after you pay all this money and come out with this great job like clear-cut salary and they've got their life all set up you have to make it done strategically you have to go to a two-year school because it's a lot less expensive and then go to a four-year school if it's required because it doesn't cost that much money to get a two-year degree and there are thousands of jobs and that's the only degree that they need right and we compete with the four-year mm -hmm. school because we we want you to understand that you could pay 60 or seventy thousand a year at some places or you could pay thirty thousand in total to get a two-year degree from us and we actually have a program with Rowan University where you can take the third year at the junior level with their instructors, but pay the community college rate. And then only in your fourth year do you actually go to their campus, pay to live there if you want to, and pay for their tuition rate, right? So it's called the three plus one program because we understand how expensive it is. So you yeah. get three at our rate and one year at their rate and you come out with two degrees so you come out with a business degree and then you come out with the four-year degree and it might be in finance or it might be in accounting so what that does is allows you to take your two-year degree and get a pretty good full-time job while you finish you know that that more finite niche market type of four-year degree so we've creatively designed it because we know how expensive it is and nobody believes me when I tell them this, but we started this pre-COVID, right? Before COVID said, you know, the whole world needs to change and get reset and all the things mm -hmm. that it did. After COVID, people stopped going back to school. They went right out and got a job. Wages were really high to work at Amazon and Target yeah. and Wawa. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I'm not going to school. I don't need to. And, you know, now that we've kind of lowered the expense, people think it's because a response to COVID and it actually wasn't. We had it in place in 2017. Um, we were starting to build the marketing. It was catching traction. And then, you know, COVID happened. But now we're starting to see enrollment change again and move up because we've made it affordable for people. We've made it more easily accessible to take online classes. Um, and, you know, we have a ton of funding from the state because New Jersey is really committed to educating their um their population because they want them to stay they want them to stay and work in new jersey you know this mom is saying to me she never even thought she's like i don't even know why i didn't even think of a two-year college <laughs> as an option 
like I mean, and I get it. You know, you're 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 just preconditioned. Like it's either this or this, yeah. but it's a whole other option out there. Okay, we got to switch gears because the mom is going to kick my butt, but I don't go into it. Being focused. Mm -hmm. And you had mentioned it. I saw it in your tips. And you go over, you know, you can train your mind to focus. They feel, they come up with all these great ideas. They create plans. And then they're pulled in this direction and that direction. As much as they make a plan, they can't even speak for the kids. They know they can't stay on target. Mm -hmm. So they want some ideas ideas of how to do that because a lot of them you know they're reinventing themselves right yep. now you know can the kids are older they've had jobs they've been some of them in corporate um, America but they want to do things on their own and then they go oh god I looked at that I was gonna start that two years ago but you know I had to clean out my closet or the kids needed me to take them here or whatever the big thing I got it over and over again please help me focus <laughs> So, um, it's definitely not an easy task. Like, so for that, it's hard, right? Let's just admit what the truth is. It's absolutely hard, but that's the point that we're all at. And so if we want to actually do something different, you have to start really small. I was with somebody a couple of weeks ago who said, well, what do you do, you know, to take a little extra time for yourself? And I said, I don't have any extra time for myself, right? It was the opposite of everything I tell people. And I realized that um, the one thing that I do is I brush my teeth a little bit longer in the morning. If I need to reset myself, the day is already out of control. It's nuts, right? The kids are in the car, one of them, the other one needs their shoes. My husband's taking the trash out because it's, you know, trash day. And I'm like, okay, it's already out of control. Are the lunches packed? Like, oh, the project, all the things. So I go downstairs and I shut the door and I'm like, you know what? It's going to take only 30 seconds off today, but I'm going to brush my teeth a little bit longer and I'm going to take a deep breath <laughs> and I pack it into something that's necessity that you can't get around. And when you start your day, like focus on yourself for just 30 seconds, that feeling, it's like a novelty, right? You're, that feeling in your mind, your neurons start pinging and they're like, whoa. And it's so simple and actually really silly, but I'm like, I no. did that for myself today. Sometimes you have to just go out and go for a walk. And it actually, before you start taking on the big projects of all the things that you plan, is you have to actually center yourself and remind yourself that you exist for a purpose and it's for everything outside, but it's also just for you. You have to put the oxygen mask on the plane, right? When it's crashing before you can save anybody else. Because if you don't, you, you can't breathe. So you have to start there and then that time transitions into, well, I have two minutes and every day, these two minutes, I'm going to look up something and put it in a folder and you start to build on your actual project, right? You have yourself the folder. It's either on your phone, on your computer, your iPad, or it's like a physical folder, but it's only two minutes. And I set my phone alarm. My phone alarm will go off and I'll be like, oh, Oh, it's Candace time. It's time for my two minutes. What am I going to do with this? Because we all can spare two minutes. We think yeah. we can, yeah. but we actually can. Um, the question I would ask is how many times a day are you on the phone complaining to somebody, right? <laughs> your mom, your girlfriend, your husband, your whatever. Right there, you probably got a half an hour that you could have done something <laughs> more productive. And it's just a way to transition how you blow off steam and how you vent instead of venting the anger inside out into the world and disrupt somebody else's flow, right? Cause they're listening and they're taking on all of your negativity. I'm going to take that, that irritation and say, you know what? No, I'm going to take all this, skip the phone call and go write some things down, go do some research, go take that next step, make the phone call that, you know, I know if I connect with this person, they're going to, take me to the next direction that I need to go for whatever project I'm planning or, you know, whatever thing I'm, I'm starting to do. By the way, there's a few life coaches that were like, Oh my God, I teach this for a living and I don't do it for myself too. Mm -hmm. But one of them said she started 
by making her bed in the morning because that was something she would do while she was breathing and, and thinking about her day. And it took her a minute. It doesn't sound like much, but she was thinking it's silly. Now she doesn't think it's so silly. No, it, it's definitely not. There was that colonel from West Point, I think, that gave that speech to one of the graduating classes, get up and make your bed. You have to start the day for yourself, not because you're selfish, but because you are a single entity of a human being. <laughs> you have to do for yourself and get ready and be prepared. And then everything else, you know, is just a tiny bit easier. But it is like, it's like notching away at something, right? There's this big, huge boulder that you're never going to be able to move until you take a hammer and you break it down a little bit at a time, a little bit every single day. And, you know, then something moves or changes or grows or is, you know, a new direction or redefined. As long as you start and consistently keep showing up for that thing. Okay. So I put this out to some people. and It was funny, the list. List your biggest distractions and your response when they surface. And that was one of your techniques to train your mind to focus. Mm -hmm. And what they realize, by the way, one of the distractions is um, a mother or, and or a mother-in-law calling them to complain about what they're not doing. So this woman is live and she said, tell Candace she gave me an idea. I'm just not going to take the call. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Just don't take the call. Now, so here's the other trick. <laughs> and it's, it's a little shameful, but since somebody's live, I'm just going to share it. So there are certain people that have a certain ringtone in my phone because oh, it's that. Oh, snap. Wait, you right. can do that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I, number one, I turn my phone reader on. There's a way inside your phone that you can announce who's calling you. So if my phone's over there and I hear that it's an unknown number, how many times do we get up for spam or that it's, whoever and I don't have time to give them what they need I'm not getting out of my chair to answer the phone I also have a certain ringtone for different people so that I know who's <gasps> <laughs> um, because there are certain people who are overly dependent on you you know some family members love them all you know but yeah, I, cannot, yeah. I cannot stop and answer the phone all the time and I'm getting up and I'm running where's my phone where's my phone and that not only disrupts like your focus and what you're doing, but you're also stressing out. So your blood pressure is going up, just be becoming an irritant, right? And then when you go into that mode and you're like, oh my gosh, how do I get back out of a bad mood <laughs> to go back and focus positively on what I was doing? You just have to eliminate that whole distraction there in the middle. I think you might have just changed my life, Candace. Like, <laughs> you think I would know that? I did not know that. Yeah. And there are people, and I'm just going to say it, in a bit, let's see, well-meaning people, that even if I say, I'm really sorry, I can call you back, it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. they, they'll just, you know, you got 45 minutes, so you have to be in the car when you do it. And even if I nicely say, people are agreeing with me, I'm sorry, you know, can I call you back? And I'll say, if I saw the ringtone, it would be so much easier for me. Mm -hmm. And then be, I wouldn't even go over to the phone because I'd feel less guilt if I didn't even go over to the phone. Yeah. Yeah. And you would know if it was work, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. so, th so they want to know, during your work day, will you take personal calls? I do. I have to. And I can see my team just jumped on, jumped on here. <laughs> um, and that's one of the things where the phone is ringing all the time for all of us. You get text yeah. messages, notifications, phones ringing. I do have to get to a point where I have to turn my phone over, shut the ringer off, leave it in the office, put it in my bag. If I'm actually trying to focus, if it's time to, you know, be in the room with the people that you're intending to meet with and try to help with, you actually have to leave your phone alone. And I will text my, I don't know, my husband and the few other yeah. people that I talk to throughout the day, like, hey, I'm unavailable from this time 
okay. for this time. You're not going to be able to get me. We went away, um, you know, for the Memorial Day weekend, and I texted a few people and said, I don't have my phone on. So if it's an emergency, here's who else you call. <laughs> um, <laughs> I like it. Because, you know, like, I'm not the only one in the world who can save you from your problems. You know, you're totally capable. And when you stop enabling them, um, you know, they, they tend to figure it out for themselves. But I also was enabled for a long time that I can do all things for all people, right? Thinking that I could. So I was always on my phone and always on my computer and not really paying attention to the people that are right in front of me, which is harmful to them. Um, borders disrespectful, but I was completely enabled by thinking that I could do it all um, because it's all available. And that's not true. Just because it's there doesn't mean you should take it. And that's true outside the phone. That's true for a lot of things. Just because it looks fancy and it's floating across yep, does not mean yep. that's meant for you. It doesn't mean that that is meant for you. It just means that it went floating across. I'm like, oh, look at that. Nice. Done. Right back here where I was. And Social media has done that some. Our attention spans have dwindled a little bit. Um, but we've allowed ourselves to become victims of it because yeah. we do sometimes too, you know? Yeah. Whew. All right. So I can't believe it. We only have a few minutes left. But this is something you addressed, and I'm getting questions on thinking you need to do more work on something overthinking it they feel as if they constantly are not ready and they overanalyze over process and they don't know how to just you know like you say just start and they want to know if you have any techniques or tools because she says she's been called a perfectionist she doesn't know if that's it or she's just scared to put it out in the world mm -hmm. well there's analysis paralysis right we just overanalyze and overplan, and we never actually take any steps. Um, but once you ha have a plan or you have an idea, even if it's not fully organized, if you just do something, if you make a phone call, if you look something up, if you print something out, if you connect with me and want to talk about it, if you connect with Sandy and want to talk about it, reaching out in any direction to actually do one thing mm -hmm. is going to ignite the next thing. And even if it's not perfect, it doesn't matter because we've all watched the Hollywood videos and or, you know, movies and we're like, okay, in order for me to be that woman who's beautiful and journals and does all the stuff, I have to have my, have my wait, 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 I have to have my pretty flower notebook and I have yeah. a perfect pen. Nope, this is half broke. My kid chewed on it. It's fine. <laughs> my candle has to be lit. My candle. Oh, wait, this is holiday hearth. This is from Christmas. This is not the perfect candle for me to sit here and drill. <laughs> you know, oh my God. like let that all go. Whatever you're doing is good enough because you're doing it. And a lot of people aren't. A lot of people are just sitting there waiting for the perfect day to show up. It's never coming. And that disappointment is hard. But once you acknowledge it, you can move on very quickly. Like, okay. The other, the last thing, because we have like one minute, is that, um, there's always going to be a carrot dangling. Yeah. That something's going to be different or better. The grass is greener. I don't eat carrots, so I'm fine. That's what you tell yourself. Nope, I don't eat carrots. And just focus <laughs> on what you're doing, right? That's all you have to say. <laughs> you want to get it's, 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 the one thing that you and I were talking before we, we started, because you said on a scale one to ten, and I'm going blank on it, but I want you to set it up and go forward oh, with it. Oh, oh. I was asking, um, we were talking, the people that say, well, it, it's too hard, or it's really hard, or that's difficult and challenging and beyond my means or whatever. Yeah. You ask yourself the question on a scale of one to 10, how hard is it? And even when you're like, well, this is like a nine today, I can't possibly do all these things. The okay. other end of the scale is, well, how easy is it for you to dismiss the whole project, right? If you're going to say that it's too hard, are you really willing to ditch the whole project? And if you're not, then you got to go back to that scale and do something. Yeah, I, I wanted to get that in because I love that. Yeah, it's it's so important. Candace, thank you so much for calling in. I really appreciate it. I'm so glad we met. 
I definitely am going to take you up and coming into my class because the Absolutely. kids would freaking love you and it would be so valuable. But before we go, for those people who didn't get to watch from the beginning, don't worry. When we're done, I'm going to record this, and then I'm going to put it on all platforms. It'll be on LinkedIn, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. Candace and I would really appreciate you sharing it. It means the world to us. How can they find you? Where can they reach you, Candace? I'm on Instagram, and I'm also on LinkedIn. Um, that's probably the easiest way. I can put my... I'm going to put my email in the chat if I can. Okay. Um, there we go. But yeah, either of those messengers I respond to, but this is my email too. Like if you have a question, if you're starting a business, if you have a barrier, a limitation, if you're in all or nothing mode for any of those things, I would say reach out and email and we can have a separate conversation, you know, just to help you get through some of those things so that your next steps are a little easier. Cool. Love it. All right, my hey, I got something to say. Candace absolutely had something to say. <laughs> and you know what I'm going to say. Until next time. Until next time. Thank you so Toodles. much. Bye, Candace. Bye.